Many of us watching this video know someone who has died of suicide or made a suicide attempt. These moments can be devastating. In this video, I will give you three practical tips that you can use today to help prevent suicide and offer support to your loved ones and people throughout your community. The top idea is something that has quickly become popularized in America and may soon become common for suicide prevention all around the world. Suicide ranks as the second leading cause of death in the United States for people aged 15 to 34. Major life changes or challenges such as a divorce or breakup, death of a loved one, starting at a new job or school, or even the financial, emotional, and psychological impact of a global pandemic like COVID-19 can make a person feel trapped or overwhelmed. Everyone will experience one or more of these challenges in their lifetime. Supporting one another as a community and looking out for others can have a major lasting impact. Hi, my name is Dr. Justin Adam Gelsizer, and this channel is all about protecting your mental health. Please support this channel by subscribing and remember to hit the like button and comment below. Number one, create time and physical space between a person and the means of suicide. One study interviewed 153 survivors of nearly lethal suicide attempts between the ages of 13 to 34 in Houston, Texas. Researchers found that a total of 24% reported spending less than five minutes between the decision to attempt suicide and the actual attempt. Another 2009 study found that nearly half of the patients reported that the period between the first current thought of suicide and the actual attempt had lasted 10 minutes or less. Meanwhile, in the United States, one study found that about 90% of people who attempted suicide do not die from suicide later on in life, and the vast majority do not attempt suicide again. If a high percentage of suicide attempts are decided in such a short period of time, then putting time and space between a person and the means of suicide might have a huge impact. Nearly half or over 30,000 people aged 15 to 34 who died of suicides in the United States from 2015 to 2019 used a firearm. The quick and lethal use of a gun used in a suicide attempt stands in contrast to poisonings, for example, which can often be reversible if immediate medical attention is provided. The idea of babysitting a gun or watching over someone's gun while they're going through a particularly rough time can be a highly effective and useful tool or even temporarily removing access to a gun's bullets or ammunition and or locking guns away in a safe so that they are not easily accessible can create a truly powerful barrier. According to an article in the Salt Lake Tribune, you are creating enough time to maybe change your mind. In fact, a man named Brett Bass served in the Marines where he became a rifle sharpshooter and pistol expert a certified marksmanship instructor. He owns six handguns and four rifles. But Bass, who is 37, has also known several men, including a fellow Marine with whom he served in Afghanistan, who killed themselves. And he has stored guns for close friends when they were severely depressed. Number two, listen, listen, listen. As part of my doctoral research fellowship at Harvard, I spent this past year conducting one-on-one -on -one interviews with 32 African-American barbers from around the United States. They each cut hair for thousands of people in their communities each year. These barbers also act as invaluable community gatekeepers that help prevent suicides and interpersonal violence. When I asked them what advice they have for people to better serve their communities, they overwhelmingly gave a similar response, just Listen, they said. Sometimes people just need someone to take the time to listen to them. One barber shared a story of a young black boy who from the onset looked upset and unhappy to be getting his hair cut. 
The barber prodded a bit and tried to figure out what was going wrong. The boy, who was reluctant to speak at first, eventually opened up and said that my mom, friends, teachers never listen to me. They just tell me what to do all the time. The barber replied, okay, I'm here to listen. When you come to my shop, that's all I'll do, just listen. After a few months of regular haircuts, his mother noticed a positive change in his attitude and demeanor. She finally asked the barber one day how he managed to break through to her son and help set him in a more positive direction. The barber said simply, I just listened to him. When asked what they talked about, the barber replied, ask him yourself and you'll be surprised what he has to say. Life-changing face-to-face -face discourse is taking place every day between barbers and their customers in communities around the country. They come in broken, but leave feeling fixed, one barber explained. Everybody goes through a hard time. An attentive and trained barber can be the difference between life and death, said another. They don't just want their clients to look good, but feel good too. And listening, according to the barbers, is a key starting element to creating change, not just in the barber chair, but throughout an American society, which is currently enduring so much right now. When is the last time that you took the time to just listen to a loved one or stranger, or ask how someone is doing in your community and offer support when they need help? Taking the time to slow down a bit and engage others in a deeply personal level might be exactly what someone needs. Number three, I'm sure you know about CPR. What about QPR? QPR training stands for question, persuade, refer. With over 5 million people completing the class, this brief 60 minute training is quickly becoming a staple of suicide prevention and is being offered by companies, community centers, and schools around the world. It can even be done online right now from home. One study found that after completion, QPR training has been shown to be effective in the short term at increasing intention to intervene within a U.S. college community. What about the long-term impact? One study looked at self-efficacy, or a personal belief in one's capability to organize and execute a course of action required to attain designated types of performance two years after doing the QPR training. This study conducted in Missouri found statistical significance within the long-term impact of QPR even after two years. The main idea of this training is not to act as someone's professional counselor, but instead learn simple tools to effectively talk to someone about suicide persuade them to seek help, and refer them to immediate and helpful resources if necessary. In other words, you might bring some hope and support when they need it most. If you or someone you know needs immediate help, please call 1-800-273-8255 or use the link, which is also located in the description section below, to talk to a counselor no matter where you're located. Both are free and confidential. Please comment below about any other tools that you find useful in your own life for preventing suicide or supporting people in your community. Stay tuned for my next video on protecting your mental health.